volunteers from the Tsuchi Jordan chapter went to the tent areas to care for the Bedouins. In Wuhan, China, a local Tsuchi volunteer delivered medical and daily supplies to different hospitals. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Simon Gan. Thank you for joining us. Tsuchi Jordan chapter has been caring for Bedouins in 10 areas. More and more people have joined the ranks of volunteers. Many of them are from Syria. These volunteers are willing to cook hot food, donate blankets to the Bedouins. Let's join them on a recent visit to the 10 areas. The small boy who's learning to talk raises his arms to welcome his elder brother. The two brothers share a meal and the elder brother takes care of his sibling. Jordan City volunteers care for Bedouins living near the Amman airport monthly. More and more Syrians are putting on volunteer vests to serve the Bedouins. They cook for them and even donate blankets to them. The mothers cannot bear to see their children go hungry. These low-income families talk and share their thoughts while having a meal. In the tent, Syrian doctor Hawking does not have a table or chair. He has to kneel down to serve the patients. The doctor also sits on the ground and helps his patient in the frog tent area. Inside and outside the tents are the parents who are worried about their children's health. The doctor carefully diagnoses and explains the ways to take the medication. Uh, thank you for the Zushi organization uh, for sharing us in, uh, uh, in uh, helping these people in, in, in these camps. Uh, and the patients in these camps. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. After providing medical services, the doctors also joined the aid distribution. Every family has received 21 kilograms of food. Although they need to walk for a kilometer to go back to their tents, the food can sustain a family of five for two weeks. Tsuchi volunteers went to a village in Zimbabwe to distribute aid supplies to 2,000 impoverished households. The supplies included rice, cooking oil and soap. Despite the long journey, the volunteers were as happy as ever. The owner of the grocery stall divided the three bags of fertilizer into many bags of small portions. He didn't fix the selling price so that the impoverished residents can pay whatever they can afford. I divide it into small packages, probably like this. Neighbors can pay whatever they can. We still rely on the grain harvested last year, which is not enough. It just barely sustains life. In the impoverished and starving Zambari, Gigi always delivers life-saving food underneath the scorching sun. You come at the right time. Many of us are hungry every day. We can't sleep at night. Just look at my face, you'll know how happy I am. Knowing that we have food to eat, I can't help but smile. The volunteer, Weida, is busy giving food to the residents. Being humble makes her happy. Siji taught me to love others and to be considerate. I used to have a bad temper, but now I know I can also help others. Today I was very touched. Although everyone was so hungry, there was no conflict. Everyone was queuing orderly. In the process of food distribution, some rice grains spilled. A woman bent down to pick up the rice grains one by one after getting approval from volunteers. People also receive second-hand clothing with joy. Contentment is really a blessing that no one can take away. In the Philippines, Tal Volcano erupted in January, destroying many houses and displacing the residents. Manila City volunteers continue to assess the affected residents' condition. Seeing how some people are even staying in pig pen, they speeded up their pace and bought construction materials. Then they gave the affected residents construction material vouchers so they can get the materials to rebuild their homes. Since the top volcano eruption, city volunteers have come to Bantangas for the eighth time to understand the conditions of the affected residents. The houses have been severely damaged, and some people are even staying in a pig pen. 
I'm grateful that they do not blame anyone. They face difficulties with optimism. They're very grateful to Digi volunteers. Although the affected residents are optimistic, the volunteers feel for them and want to speed up the pace of the aid distribution. The degrees of the house's damages are different and they need different construction materials. It would be difficult to transport building supplies from Manila. City volunteers are buying construction materials locally. The shop owner also gives them the lowest price, seizing the opportunity to help his fellow countrymen. For many years, we have been helping the local residents. This time is no exception, especially because our shop was not damaged. AD households receive construction materials vouchers that is worth 300 U.S. dollars each. This way they can get the needed construction materials according to their needs and rebuild their home with their own strength. Thank you to G. Jessica, who is an Indonesian Suji volunteer, has passion for cooking before joining Suji. At first, she cooked meat noodles to raise funds for Suji. After being certified as a Tsuchi volunteer in 2018, she chose to adopt a vegetarian diet completely. She will cook vegetarian dishes in every fundraising event now. Her vegetarian cuisine is also well received by children. Dear audience and friends, today is a wonderful day for me because I'm going to cook with a Tsuchi volunteer. The chef Jessica is an Indonesian Chichi volunteer. She is going to prepare skillful dishes for the students of moral education class. I'm going to cook Japanese miso soup, fried sweet potatoes and Korean style stir-fried vegetables. The ingredients for Korean style stir-fried vegetables are glass noodles, bell peppers, Dutch beans, vegetarian meat, mushrooms, carrots and black fungus. She is able to cook delicious dishes with vegan ingredients now, but initially she knew nothing. At the beginning, I joined Suji for raising donation to build Jin Si Ha. At that time, I cooked some Indonesian food like turmeric chicken soup noodles to sell. But later, I decided not to cook meat dishes. I changed to cook vegetarian dishes in a fundraising event every year. Her stubbornness is not only for cooking. Actually, I was not completely vegetarian at the beginning, although I decided to become a vegetarian in 2014. In fact, I haven't really done it in the following three years. Until I got certified as a city commissioner, I started to embrace vegetarianism thoroughly. Jessica's good cooking skill makes the children willing to eat vegetarian food. Her wish for advocating vegetarianism has been integrated into every vegetarian dish she cooks. As people continue to take preventive measures against the spread of the coronavirus epidemic, such volunteers in California have visited the Chinese-American shop owners to share epidemic prevention knowledge. They encourage the public to adopt a vegetarian diet and also inspire people's love. <laughs> The three city volunteers visit the shop owners to share epidemic prevention knowledge and to inspire love. We show the public ways to prevent the spread of the virus. Since um, some of the shop owners are Catholics or Christian, we show them how Chiji volunteers carry out international disaster relief work, including building a church in Edgewater. They have made donations. The volunteers carefully put up with the collected money. The positive affinities the volunteers form in the past six years are making a difference in this critical period. In the beginning, I was afraid and unwilling to do this. 
就是这样子，很值得做。However, after doing it for a while, many people became my friends. Every day I come visit them and share some correct information. The epidemic has awakened the public. I was a carnivore and I especially eat seafood and meat. I thought that adopting a vegetarian diet is something I cannot accomplish. However, this time, because of the epidemic, I've realized that many people are eating lovely animals. I've been influenced and I no longer want to eat meat. The doctor who has adopted a vegetarian diet for more than 30 years also promotes the benefits of vegetarianism. For me, adopting a vegetarian diet is natural. In Buddhism, it creates merits and lessens one's negative karma. Before going amongst the public, the volunteers need to undergo training and learn how to wear masks correctly and how to share epidemic prevention knowledge. As they go amongst the public, they also calm the people's anxious minds. As COVID-19 epidemic continues, CG volunteers in China are doing what they can to help the needy. In Xiamen, CG volunteers delivered 50 buckets of hypochlorous acid disinfectant to different communities. Meanwhile, in Wuhan, Hubei, a local CG volunteer put on protective clothing and delivered medical and daily supplies to different hospitals. Wuhan has closed off, and local city volunteer Dong Lingyi is heading out wearing protective clothing. He's not heading out for his family, but for medical professionals. In a nearly empty supermarket, he bought the daily necessities. Since the medical staff eats meal boxes all the time, Dong has bought preserved vegetables and radish for them. In his car, which is filled with eight supplies, there are also medical supplies the city foundation is donating to the hospitals. As people take precautions against the epidemic, disinfectants are delivered into the communities in Xiamen. These were donated by Wang Li Hong and Wang Jiajie. They have donated 50 buckets of hydrochlorous acid disinfectant. Holding 25 liters each, city volunteers deliver 50 containers of hypochlorous acid disinfectant to different community committees. We disinfect the stairways and elevators in every small district. We disinfect the buildings twice a day. There are five villages in Banshan community. There are five areas that need to be disinfected, so we gave them five buckets. Since we are short in supplies now, we are very grateful. Footage not captured by video, but the volunteers also delivered the disinfectant by boat to Gulang. Amid the epidemic, this group of volunteers continue to safeguard the people with love and kindness. The novel coronavirus has affected much of the world's everyday activities, including Tsuchi's care visits to recipients. To prevent and safeguard the people's health, Singapore Tsuchi volunteers have called to check in on care recipients and also get the latest information about their condition, so they may send out material aid to those who need it the most. Hmm. Hey, you are now in Gathering information, organizing the information, then distributing aid items is how city volunteers are responding to the COVID-19 epidemic. For Singapore, the volunteers are trying to get a sense of how best to distribute their limited supplies, and phone surveys have become very important. For those on a home visitation team, it might be a burden, so we have begun using telephone and mobile messaging services or even taxes to inquire how our recipients are doing. At this moment, we're doing our best for prevention measures. 
Then we need to further understand whether the recipients have received a government-issued quarantine letter. If everything is okay and there's no problem, I feel it is still best to personally deliver the aid items to them, as this will bring a sense of comfort to them. Yeah, my mom. This care recipient has major responsibilities, thus she cannot afford to get sick, especially during this time. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, this COVID-19 affects me tremendously, and also I am very uh, uh, prone to listening to the news uh, frequently to know what's happening. Like I said, I am 24/7 taking care of her. If not for all this community support, I don't think I can cope. The first phase of the campaign to comfort chaotic hearts begins with 155 gift packs in hopes these material aid helps to ease people's uncertainty. In Taiwan, prevention items for the COVID-19 virus have been difficult to purchase, even for government officials such as the Taoyuan Aviation Police Bureau. Thus, they have reached out to Tsuchi for help. Thankfully, Tsuchi has resources globally and was able to receive supplies from overseas to help those in Taiwan. They also gave the airport alcohol spray for disinfection and instant noodles. Let's take a look. Making sure all the aid items are accounted for. In this uncertain time, epidemic preventative items are difficult to find. And for those on the first line of defense, Taiwan's aviation police and customs, they are lacking the supplies to protect themselves. They inform us when they have enough masks, it's one per person per day. But when they are short on masks, they have gone three days before ever getting a new one. We could not bear to hear such news. There are 2,300 masks, and we're also sharing with you Tsuji's instant noodle. So when the workers have late nights, they can have a snack to eat if they're hungry. These virus prevention items have been sent to Taiwan from overseas Tsuji volunteers. As the Taoyuan Aviation Police is needing some supplies, they asked Tsuji for help and volunteers immediately responded. If our first line of defense is down, then it's a great harm to the country as well as society. I'm grateful to Tsuji for the items. Besides giving aid, also important is spreading vegetarianism, so the frontline workers may continue to protect the public's safety and peace. Starting today, we are launching a special series about craftsmen, and we introduce Lu Guangchao, who has the nickname Field Doctor. After he retired, he became a violin maker. He's one of the few in Taiwan to do this, and he says it gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment, making all instruments sing again. A melodious violin sound comes from the second floor of the apartment. It's actually from a violin that Lu Guangchao made by himself. Generally speaking, the manufacturing and repair of a violin are not the same skill or techniques. Lu Guangchao is one of the few domestic violin makers with a Czech license. He is one of the few violin builders or those who can do repair. This is the front panel. This is the back panel. There are more than 10 violins and dozens of repair tools on his studio wall. And there are various violins and cellos to be repaired on the ground of the studio. This part is hard to fix. Yes, it's quite hard to fix. So I'm still doing something where you see I need some instruments underneath on the ground. This delicate repair work needs to be done step by step. He has to be careful and cannot stop his work, as he often works right through meal times and doesn't have time to eat. Shakespeare said that a life without books is like a life without wisdom. Lu adds a phrase saying that a life without music is like earth without life. According to him, music is the greatest friend to accompany one throughout life. Lu 
is from Taidong's Pinan tribe. His father is an indigenous music composer, Lu Sunbao. His love of music can be attributed to his father. After retiring from the army, he began to study piano tuning. In 1996, he was 42 years old and switched over to violin repair, which he studied for eight months. His friend then sent him to Czech to learn this craft. The first day that I reported for this duty, the boss wanted me to stay, but I was almost kicked out before I was able to stay. At the beginning, there was a language barrier he had to overcome. Also, he didn't have the basic repair skills necessary. He thought it was necessary to make the most of this opportunity. And though he was only 80 kilograms in weight, when he returned, he was only 60 kilograms. His wife said that he seemed to be like a skeleton. After becoming middle-aged, he went to another country to learn this art, and after returning to Taiwan, he started to make repairs to violins. With his own hands, he took violins that were scarred and damaged after years of disrepair and let them become new again. This is his greatest joy. Now he often repairs valuable violins that are over a hundred years old. <laughs> Because I have special demand for my own sound, which I feel sometimes the position has changed. Even tuning and changing strings and the angle of this bridge will change. As soon as the bridge angle changed, the sound changes. Then you can't pull or tune it at all. Basically everything is interlaced, so tuning is very important. For me as a performer, he's very important. I met Mr. Lu from my colleague. He's very serious and polite. He's almost always on call, like family doctor. My instrument sometimes has a husky sound, and I call him after any situation. I think his tone is very good. From the beginning to the end, it is all dependent upon the hands of others. This is the allure and mystery of the violin. His greatest sense of accomplishment in life is repairing violins and making instruments that musicians praise. For Lu Guangchao, music is part of his life. It's no wonder that he would say if there's no music in this world, the world would simply not have any life. Sichuan's in Texas made vegetarian tacos on their university's vegetarian expo to promote the benefits of vegetarianism. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.